10 billion dollars wow. that's all we needed first three five days you have an impulse in the market and everybody wanted engineers it was like being at the top of the world it's just very difficult to leave you realize that your opportunity is limitless that you need to be a game player to to be successful i mean what did you feel you couldn't possibly make money with that now you couldn't trade too fast they don't assess the risk of their systems correctly. And the system just broke. So timing is everything. It's just a pattern system. It was easy to raise money. And you only take one signal in one market. Less money and and be prepared for bigger risk. Even gold wasn't trading. Um, my, my favorite. It works. Perry, uh, uh, first very simple question. Uh, your education background is math. Yes. Why? Why? Because my actually my mother's a mathematician, and and parents push push children. I it was a it was an era when I was going to college. It was an era where there's so much opportunity, and everybody wanted engineers, and. Uh, I was also very fortunate that in my first year of college, they started a course in programming computers, which was 19, 1965. 50 years ago, 53 years ago. So. Yes, yes. It, We're not pointing to your age. <laughs> no, no. So luckily we don't all age, but... In Russia, we didn't even uh, know what is a computer. It, it, you know, it was fascinating to be part of that era. And, and we were just talking before that from there, I had an opportunity when I was doing graduate work to work for a government project at the university, which allowed me to, uh, to do some navigational work for satellites. That is pointing satellites, aiming, moving satellites. It was just the beginning of the era. Remember, Russia had their first satellite, Sputnik, in 1957. And then 1961, Gagarin. And, and the U.S. rushed to try to catch up. And, and I was part of that group of people. It was, it was fascinating. So I did navigation on this project. And then I went to Rand Corporation in California which had the contract to do the to create the navigation for Gemini, which was the two-man uh, satellite, and that navigation was used for Apollo to go to the moon because you have to develop it ahead of time. You can't just send the people out with no way to get there, uh, and and it was just great as a young person to be there when they launched satellites and when they when they sent up Apollo. It's just it was like being at the top of the world. But, you, you know, you were at the top of the world. I mean, what kind of feeling did you have? Oh, it was just very exciting. I was there when they aborted a launch because some in the old days we had these card readers and they big card readers and they used to vibrate and somebody put a Coca-Cola on the top and it vibrated off and fell into the machine and it caused everything to stop. So we aborted a launch because somebody put their soda on top of the card reader it so was the next question uh from uh, being a scientist actually rocket scientist how did you become a trader oh well i had a partner um a, a very good friend in this work that i was doing in aerospace and we decided that we'd form our own computer company he would sell and i would write programs and we did that and we started doing uh, medical reimbursement. Had I stayed in that field, I would be really wealthy now, but I didn't. Somebody came along with a problem in options, London options, mm -hmm. and they needed somebody with computers and with mathematics, and and they couldn't find anybody till they came to us, and we said, oh sure, we'll try that. <laughs> and And we did, and we had some success, and from there somebody else came to us, and we just never left. We just never, never stop. Once you learn about the markets, it's just very difficult to leave. It's like the great, the great entrepreneurial uh, world. When right. You don't it's more, more of a, a addiction or it is. You realize that your opportunity is limitless in it. 
and it's fun. You know, if you're a puzzle solver, if, you know, we were talking about how do you qualify people. I think when IBM originally was looking for programmers, Nobody knew what a programmer was in the 1950s and 1960s. So they advertised for people that did crossword puzzles, were chess players, and bridge players. So game players was were their idea of the best qualified people to do these things. And I think that's probably still true of traders, that you need to be a game player to, to be successful. Well, let's uh, ask you this question. Uh, what was the first year uh, when you built your first system? And uh, what was the system based on? Oh, well, it was a trend following system. And, that, and the reason is in aerospace, we used exponential smoothing to... Moving tra average. To track... Well, no, it's not really moving average. It's a smoothing, uh, similar to moving average, but... Uh, and we used it to track the the uh, flight of a missile. Trajectory. The trajectory of a missile. And and while we were sitting around doing nothing at some times, we did that with the prices in the stock market. And so you had a lot of people in aerospace trading their own stocks using these smoothings. And in the 1960s and the 1970s, it was so easy. I mean, the markets trended, there, there was less participation. When they started up, they continued up. Well, that's why That's why things like uh, originally 10-day moving averages, which was Donchin's first system, was so successful. 10-day moving average. You couldn't possibly make money with that now. But anyway, that was the start of it. So we used, we used trends and we used them because that's what we knew. And all the other things like as you got into agriculture, you start applying them to spreads and and other similar things. But it seemed to it it worked, and I guess everybody stayed with it. Once uh, you start making money uh, on on your opinion on the playing system, I mean, what did you feel? I'm not talking Wait, about I'm what? not talking about <laughs> the, just let's say is a dollar amount, but. For example, when you have uh, when you have your skills and you applying your skills to the field you, where you actually uh, never been before, I mean, how to parallel that yes. kind of feelings? Well, we had a difficult time early on because we were we were doing very well and we created some small funds of commodities because when I started there were no interest rate markets, even gold wasn't trading, and and so. It was all wheat and corn and, and cattle. And we applied, and sugar and things like that. We applied uh, those to, those, uh, the, the, that type of system. We gotten a little more sophisticated, but not much. Uh, and we made portfolios and then we marketed them as funds in 1973, just in, Best. Just so in time to hit. Funds. Yeah, you but, well, it was a, a fund, it was a fund but it was highly regulated in California. You could get people to put in $50,000 once. You couldn't solicit more than once. Mm -hmm. And you started it out. And we hit, 1973 was the Russian wheat deal with the US. Russia was in need of grain and we sold them ours. And then we had a terrible crop. And, and so the price of, of wheat tripled and everybody made a ton of money. Uh, it was just being at the right place at, at the right time. Yes. And oddly enough, most of the people, I mean, they must have made 500% or 1000%. And they said, you can't possibly do better than this. We're taking our money out. <laughs> so we wound up with very few people and, and we wound up switching our orientation starting another fund, getting other people interested, and, and broadening out the nature of the business. How did you execute back then? Oh, we, you called up, you, you, we generated computer signals because, and we had large computers then, there weren't any such thing as laptops or even minis. We had large computers and 
and um, we called up the bro we called up the broker and placed the orders and we paid uh, fifty dollars per side or I'm sorry fifty dollars round turn commission to trade fifty dollars so you couldn't trade too fast oh obviously uh, it was really a different it was a different but we what we were so highly leveraged that we could absorb the fifty dollars I mean now we pay three dollars it's it's a whole different market but anyway that was that was uh, that was fun it was fun talking to the brokers the brokers became our friends I guess especially because I'm sure I'm sure after that when they see when the brokers see that you know the whatever trader investor client made a lot of money that investor probably starts pulling you and oh yes Harry, you know yes here's some more people that would like to use your system it was easy to raise money but the markets were easier now it's a much more challenging problem yeah we'll come after that to the whatever the people doing right now before or right now usually uh, what part of a uh, technical analysis is in your systems 30 percent 50 percent 70 my stuff is 100 percent technically yeah I, it's all algorithmic. It's fully automatic. I have lots of different approaches that I use short term, long term, but everything is automated because that's my background and I feel more comfortable with that. But technical analysis, like for example, when you're building a system, a lot of people, uh, besides technical analysis, they put something else. Yeah. They do. They, they may put a fundamental overview on things, which I don't object to. I just can't do that. I'll, I'll, if I'm short-term trading, I might use a longer-term average to to see what the overall direction is, or like some friends of mine will use, th you know, what they call their triple screen approach. Uh, Elder. Elder does that, but he was by, by far not the first one, although he does like to take credit for it. I understand. No, he just, uh, as you can see right there in your book, he talk about you right here. Yes. Uh, he said at the you were, um, I'll, I'll translate for you. He said that uh, you were pretty much the only one guy who over the years, it's gonna be one of my questions, over the years, stay with the progress because a lot of people who were farm and fine back 50 years ago, they're completely different right now. I mean, it takes yeah. a lot of gods to stay with the progress after 50 years or 60 years of progress. Yes, but, but like everybody, you have to evolve because the markets are different, the data is different, the people are different. It's, as I said, it's it's more competitive and it's more difficult. Uh, what was the most profitable system of yours? And uh, why do you think it worked out? It will take away a question with the market condition, because you know, when yeah. the market condition helped, uh, for example, I'll tell you a little bit of my story. I made a lot of money 2000, 2001, 2002. Everybody say that it was easy in 2000, 2001. The, the, the part is I never trade Nasdaq. I never trade any single share of the internet like a Yahoo or anything else. Oh. I made my money in a totally different way. So that's what I'm saying. It will take a part, uh, a, a good market condition. What was your most profitable system and, and why you think was it? Well, there were two really. Um, one in the 1980s when I headed the uh, development for an oil company and we had unlimited amounts of money and and we traded you for uh, for trading or for the for trading for trade. oh. yes you know oil in in the 1980s oil it was these companies had the money was no object approach to things um, and I was with a, an oil company that was that uh, is not so well known, but was very wealthy, privately held, called Transworld Oil, and we traded the biggest book in the world, and and we and we. How much money if, uh, if it's okay to say? Well, in the early '80s, it was ten billion dollars. Wow, and that was so that involved. was real money in in the '80s. It's, uh, it's a real money right now. I mean, you know. Ma Yes, it's, it's, you know, now you have to have a billion dollars under management to be a credible advisor, right. you know, CTA. But back then you could have, you could have 10 million and be big time. So you would trade the book over $10 billion? Yes. How many of we, you was there, were there? Oh, it was uh, maybe 15 of us. Yeah, but you know, for that kind of book, 
it's it's not that much money but it was automated also it was even Stephen Cohen book was uh, uh, in the beginning not by far bigger than that and we had like a huge stuff of people well we only traded a couple of different methods and they were automated and it was mostly for you know execution we had five technical people and seven people executing or something developers. yeah it's it's the way that's all we needed so what was the system based on oh that was all trend following the 80s was still very successful trend following and and we had we also had one shorter term three or five day system that we tr traded in it yeah i like that i always like that time frame that's why you ask in the beginning of the conversation me too you know because first three five days you have an impulse in the market yeah but at least it shows you yes at the power of where it's coming from yes you can make enough money in that um and you're not fighting costs and and other things and i still have quite a few short-term systems that have that same same time frame uh, and uh, so uh, anyway so that was one of the systems the other one was the one i mentioned that where i had a company in the 1990s and we did we did intraday breakout that was you know like opening range breakout that was so popular then and in retrospect it worked because it was a gigantic rally in the market and and we benefited from trading the right things at the right time and and i had mentioned when we talked earlier that in eight years we had a 3.0 sharp ratio in in real trading and we sold the company to ednf man in 1998 and after that the market just stalled out and the system just broke so timing is everything no it it didn't fail but it just went sideways after that a couple of the sectors did okay and and the other sectors didn't they offset each other and i've looked at it since then and and it's never really recovered from it so the, the first system that you built in 1980 where you run a portfolio of 10 billion dollars mm -hmm. uh percentage wise how much how many percentage you were making a year i'd say it's tough because it very you know it varies making money in futures is not as consistent as as other things i'd say we averaged about 25 percent a year uh, yes some years five some years 40. so it was but we leveraged quite a bit we leveraged more because we're commercial and commercials get favorable margin even if they're not doing commercial stuff uh you uh, I know the story about the long-term capital management. Of course. Well, that's a different problem. <laughs> I know. So I just want to know your personal opinion, uh, like a person on the inside. Well, you know, I think the lesson to be learned from long-term capital and other things is you can't eliminate risk. You can push it down. You can push it down. It's going to pop up somewhere else. You can make believe you eliminate, and just because you haven't had it for some period doesn't mean it's not going to pop up and be just as bad as it was. And it is. It's it's like a short options profile. One day you, you can get killed. Yeah, you make money a lot of a lot of little profits, and you get very complacent, and then all of a sudden, boom. Yeah, and and long term capital apparently did something that was scientifically horrible they they made the decision that certain events that caused problems in the past would not happen again and of course they're right yeah but a new event will and the and they took that data out so that they could show their risk was so small they could leverage it 50 times but it but it's some risk is going to come up someplace and that's the whole issue of survival in in trading is to understand that at some point you're going to have some horrible risk and you better be prepared to either defend it or hedge it or do something you, so so that you can you can survive it and and move on to make profits again so i i think that's the fault of most beginning and even intermediate developers they don't assess the risk of their systems correctly. They're too optimistic. Oh, absolutely. That's the biggest problem with a lot of people. 
Yeah. Um, so I would I would rather make less money. Um, I mean, it has to be an adequate amount to, for the risk, but less money and and be prepared for bigger risk. Usually, uh, if one wants to build the algorithm system, uh, what they should begin with? What, the, let's say, you usually, because I'm sure you have a lot of different systems over the years. You know, for example, the trend following stopped working, you work uh, 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 under trend or something else. So, yeah. Let's say, when you build, uh, what are you usually looking for? Well, I mean, I recommend that people that start, start with trend following. They start with long-term trend following. Long-term trend following has an underlying uh, premise that's, that's fundamentally correct. And it's, it's driven by interest rate policy. So that the central banks all seem to get together these days and follow much the same process. But they, they lower rates to stimulate the economy and they do it in an orderly, slow fashion. They raise rates to dampen inflation in an orderly way. And these create trends in interest rates. And those trends in interest rates create trends in FX. But they're all long term. And so you start with that. And, and I'd say 70, 75% of the big fund managers have long term trend following as the basis of their performance. And then they add other shorter term systems to give them some distinction. Stability and everything else. Well, they want to look different from other other companies so they add some other systems that that make their performance different but under that they all have trend following uh your uh three to five days system mm -hmm. what they are based on the one that that i like the most that i use the most um is just a pattern system and it's based on the old idea yeah, that, that was the next question so right we'll start it's based that. on the old idea of um the market goes down three days in a row it's very likely to rebound, to, to rebound. and you can do that in in but you need to use a noisy market so s individual stocks don't work uh by by by, by they mean noisy it means the market is in a like a range it's not breaking higher or breaking low no some some markets like index markets are always noisy so interest rate markets like the the short-term ones like uh the short sterling or euro dollars are not noisy they're very trending so you need to start with a market that is noisy and the index markets are generally the ones uh and and they are under in a sideways range they're even noisier but even in a trending range they don't go up more than a couple of days in a row before they go turn around it doesn't trade often enough and so in the market especially yeah. lately is not that many so well it may be 80 percent reliable but it's for example in the s p it'll only make six percent a year now that's not enough so what you do um is you find other index markets and some other markets even even long-term bonds and and uh, the euro currency uh work for things like this uh, and and you monitor this program for a, whatever market six or eight or ten markets that work and then whichever one gives you a signal you take and you only take one signal in one market so you what you're adding is more signals one at a time and by doing that you can now change that six percent to 15 or 16 percent which is good enough for me. Fantastic. No, no, no. It's a fantastic for everybody these days. Yeah. So, so here you have a system that, that may take maybe $20,000 to trade one futures contract one, one at a time, whenever you get, whichever signal you get, you take right. and you get a, a pretty decent return. So, and, and reasonably low risk. So anyway, that's, that's the type of short term system. So I would wait, um, say, three days to get in. It does something. And then I, I take two days to get out. And I use profit taking or I exit after two days. Profit taking, uh, what do you mean by that? Well, you, 
I, I based, on the, based on the risk you take, the profit. No, market. price volatility. Okay. Yeah, always on price volatility. And as a default, I always use 20 days. I use the same as options. It's um, it's historic volatility. Classic, classic measurement. You uh, uh, consider as ATR, average through it? Yes, absolutely. Um, my, my favorite. It works. Of course, you know, you about that. For me in trading, something that can be explained it worked. For mm -hmm. example, the average through range, you can see if there's an 80% of the bar with the same size. Yeah. yeah. At least it's something you can rely on. Now, I've tried implied volatility. Doesn't I work at all. Do. I don't like it. It's like it. just, it, it's a, it's a uh, psychological reaction to the market and it just has no predictability in it. But I'm sure, I'm sure that's a, inside of you. I mean, you, as far as I understand, oh, yeah. Weekends, uh, life. It's 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 fun to create something that works, you know, and and it's all it's you know it's a game. It's it's just a nice it's a nice game for me. And after you've done it for so long, you get good at it.